Hey Clashers, Community Manager Darian Vorlich here. Kind of hiding in an undisclosed location in the Supercell office. Hopefully they don't catch me kind of giving this unanticipated sneak peek video over the weekend. So one of the things that we want to discuss in this video is some game balance change that we're introducing with Town Hall 12. Now we're going to kind of briefly go over them, but the full list will be available in the notes below. So we're just going to kind of graze over these topics and give you an idea of what kind of game balance changes are coming with this update. Now we've broken them down into th several different categories. And the first is economy. The second is spells. The third is defensive buildings. The fourth is troops. So why don't we get started with the game economy changes? So what we consider game and economy changes are things that affect your gold, your elixir, and your storage, and your dark elixir, obviously, and how you use them. So starting with wall rings. Now we've been hearing your feedback on what we could do to make wall rings a little more appealing and viable in the game. So what we've done, we've changed how much they've cost and how they're utilized. So the first change is that wall rings the price has been reduced from 200 gems and it's now 100 gems per ring. Furthermore, we've made the cost for each wall upgrade a little bit easier to understand. Each ring represents 1 million in resources. So for example, if your wall requires 1 million gold, that means you only need one ring. If you need 2 million gold or 2 million elixir, that means two wall rings. If you need three million resources, three wall rings, and so forth. If your upgrade requires less than one million resources, that means you only need one ring for that wall fragment. A little bit easier to follow now, isn't it? Another change to the game economy is the trader. So the trader will now offer an increased number of wall rings every time he comes to town. He'll still have his, his plethora of potions available, but when it comes to wall rings, he will all have an increased amount. So hopefully that will make the wall rings a little bit more appealing to you guys to use them to upgrade. Another change that we're adding to the gain economy is increase in storage. So when you reach Town Hall 12, the maximum elixir in gold at Town Hall 12 is 12 million per resource type. That means 12 million gold, 12 million elixir. And when it comes to dark elixir, you'll be able to store 240,000. So all of these levels have been increased for Town Hall 12. Another thing that's getting increased is your treasury. So we've increased across the board how much your treasury can store across all Town Hall levels. Now we're not going to get into the itty bitty details about how much each one's getting increased. All I can do is ask you to check the notes, look at what Town Hall level you are, and you can see how much your treasury has been increased by. One of the most exciting parts of these game balance changes is the cost of walls. Yes, we've been hearing your comments, we've been watching what you've been posting, and we have reduced the price of walls. Now, these price reductions are between levels uh, 5 through 11, so basically town halls 5 through 10, and the reduction entirely depends on which wall level you're upgrading. So for example, if your wall is level five, the price is reduced by 5,000. If your wall is level 11, the price is reduced by 1 million. So again, this is going to make upgrading a lot more exciting, a lot more accessible, because we know that upgrading walls can be a very tedious process. So hopefully this will help you guys, you know, upgrade to get closer to Town Hall 12, because you want, definitely want to want to get there. Continuing on, another thing that we've increased is how much you earn for star bonuses. So when you're doing your trophy pushing or your farming runs, depending on what league you're in, you will get increase in your star bonus. And now these rewards across all leagues have been dramatically increased. So we're not going to list all of them in this video, but again, check the notes below, see how much they've been increased by. And I think you'll be pretty happy with it. The final part of the game economy cha balance changes is how much you earn for war loot from clan wars. So win, lose, or draw, we've actually increased how much loot you earn from clan wars. So for example, if you win 
the percentage that you earn has been increased from 600% to 700%. If you lose, the amount has been increased from 180% to 300%. And if you draw, it's been increased from 240% to 350%. So again, doesn't matter if you win, lose, or draw, everybody's getting an increase in how much loot they're getting from Clan Wars. That's pretty exciting, isn't it? So moving on to spells. Lightning's been changed a little bit. So with the lightning spell, you know, each spell does a total of six lightning strikes. So we've increased how much damage each one of those strikes does. Um, they've been increased across the board with the exception of level one. Level one's doing the same amount of damage, but all across the board after level one, so level two and up, the damage has been increased per lightning strike. So another spell that's been on the receiving end of game balance changes is the clone spell. Now clone is a great utility spell that has insane functionality, but the housing cost is so high. So looking at that, we've reduced its housing cost from four to three. Now, on top of that, we've reduced its training time and cost by 25%. Its donation cost is also reduced. On top of that, its duplicated housing space is reduced by 25% as well. So rounding out the list of spells that are getting some game balance changes, uh, we're finally coming upon Freeze. Now Freeze is getting some major changes to it. And a lot of these are based off of the feedback that we've been getting from you regarding how Inferno Towers were changed and you guys wanted to see an increase in utility of the Freeze spell. So what's gonna happen with Freeze is that we've changed how much housing space it costs. It's been reduced from two housing slots to one. That's right, Freeze will now take up one housing space. On top of that, we've reduced the training cost and time for Freeze by 50%. Also, the donation cost has been reduced by 50%. But when you reduce that much out of the Freeze spell, that does come with a reduction in functionality. So the duration of the free spell has now been reduced by almost 50%. Moving on to defenses. Now there are gonna be some pretty big changes here that's gonna affect everyone. And the first one is this. When you upgrade your town hall from one level to the next, you are now going to be required to place all purchasable buildings down in your village before you can upgrade. For example, if you are at Town Hall 10, you will not be able to upgrade to Town Hall 11 until you put down all the available Inferno Towers and other buildings that you unlock at Town Hall 10. Same thing with Town Hall 11. If you're going to Town Hall 12, you will not be able to upgrade to Town Hall 12 until you've put down your Eagle Artillery and all available unlocked buildings from Town Hall 11. Now this restriction is going to apply across all Town Hall levels. We're basically following the builder base model of requiring you to place all your buildings before you can upgrade to the next Town Hall level. Now this is a pretty big change on how we've been allowing upgrades in the past but hopefully this will help improve some of the matchmaking changes that we're going to be implementing into the game. So, moving on, we have a few defensive structures that are going to be receiving some balance changes. Now, we're not going to list all the damage numbers and hit point numbers in this video, but if you look at the sneak peek notes below, you can see all the stats that are being changed. So, starting with the Archer Tower. Levels 12 through 14 will be getting a slight decrease in damage. Um, Inferno Towers. So levels four and five in multi-mode will be getting an increase in damage. Now that's a direct result of input from the community. So after we made the Inferno Tower change, uh, we've agreed that the multi-mode for Inferno Towers did need a slight buff in damage, and that's what you're getting. Bomb Towers, levels five and six will get a slight damage increase. Now I'm saving the best one for last. So let's get out the party poppers. Are you ready for this? Eagle Artillery will no longer do its extra damage to golems. Yes, you read that right. The Eagle Artillery will no longer do the three times damage bonus to golems. Should we get out the party poppers or not? Mm -hmm. 
Moving on to the next category, troops. So a few troops have been on the receiving end of some game balance changes. Some of them have been buffed, and there has been some nerfing. So why don't we start with the healer. At levels 4 and 5, her healer abilities have been reduced, which means she will do less healing now. Again, for all the stats, take a look at the notes included in this sneak peek. The miner has gotten buffed. So the miner, his movement speed has been increased from 250 to 400. Also, the amount of time that it takes for him to emerge from the ground and submerge back under has been reduced from 1.2 seconds to 0.6. In other words, he pops up and goes back down much faster than before. So this should make miners a little bit more viable. Giants, level 7 and 8 hit points have been buffed. Bowlers got a DPS decrease. So across levels 1, 2, and 3, the DPS has been lowered. Now, Pekka. So one of the things that we wanted to look at is how Pekka was used, not just at the higher levels, but also at the lower levels. So from the higher levels, five and, levels 5 and 6, her hit points have been increased. But we've also reduced how much her training elixir costs across the board. So this should make P.E.K.K.A.s a lot more viable at the lower levels, because one of the things that we found is that at the lower levels, P.E.K.K.A.s price was so high that, you know, mid-training them and training batches of them, a lot more time and resource consuming. So by lowering the resource cost, hopefully uh, P.E.K.K.A.s will become a much more attractive, uh, viable troop. But also, not only has this cost been reduced at the lower levels, but across the board. Now, this also applies to dragons as well. So, at level 5 and 6, dragons' hit points haven't increased. And the training cost for dragons across the board, levels 1 through 6, have been reduced. The last troop that's getting game balance changes is the witch. So, for levels 1, 2, and 3... Their hit points have been increased. So again, to see how much by how much their hit points have been increased, take a look at the sneak peek notes. Uh, but they've been increased across the board. Same thing with DPS. DPS of the witch has been increased across the board. Now, what has been changed is that she will always only spawn four skeletons. So at level one, so she spawned three. Now she's going to spawn four. At level two. There's no change because she already spawned four. And at level three, she spawned five, but that's been reduced to four. So what this does, it gives a little more consistency to how much damage the witch does, especially with her ranged attack. So it actually gives her ranged attack a little more uh, credence to utilize it for range for hitting you know long range targets. And it makes a skeleton it makes you less dependent on using those skeletons. So we have one final category of game balance changes. Now this is really minor. Uh, we, make up, we have two changes going into the builder base. So one, at builder base level 8, they're getting 20 wall pieces or 4 wall segments. And also the builder base level 8 troop, the super P.E.K.K.A., when she receives fatal damage, she explodes. The amount of damage she does when she explodes is being reduced across the board. So that wraps up our game balance change sneak peek. So again, for the full details, check out the notes that I've included. Um, again, because this is still update in progress, these are subject to change. But these are largely 99% done. But again, I just want to give you that caveat that these could change as we do additional game balance testing. So hopefully you guys enjoyed these game balance changes. We'll see you at the next sneak peek update. And looks like nobody found me inside the supply closet. So if you're seeing this video, that means nobody's confiscated it. See you guys next time.